hey guys, there have been a lot of rumors um, coming out about me recently and my character and who I am. And I just want to say, none of them are true. I, n- I never touched myself to the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> okay? <laughs> I didn't touch myself to the image of the Statue of Liberty. Hey, we got a P.O. Box. Who does? We do. Indy, what is the P.O. Box? 3940 Laurel Canyon Boulevard, hashtag 631. It's pound. Did you t- <laughs> it is pound. 3940 Laurel Canyon Boulevard, pound 631. Studio City, California, 91604 is our PO box. So if you guys want to send us anything dumb or fun or whatever, we'll open dumb, if it. Dumb, fun, cool. If anyone has some pickled garlic, if it's please send <laughs> us pickled garlic. Okay, I really want to try it. Um, you can peanut, send to Indy pickled garlic. You can send me peanut M&Ms and all your money. Um, but basically, <laughs> uh, if it's really cool or something really interesting, we'll show it on the podcast. And then um, we're going to try to show all of it regardless on like our Instagram stories and stuff. Yeah. So like, if you want to send us a package, please do at package, the address on letters, the Package, letters, whatever you want. My, Yay. my dad, if you find him, put him in a box. Send him to me. Can I get a count that? Holy hell. From what? I don't know. What were you thinking? Give me a number. 15. I thought you were say 15. 14. Oh, 13. <laughs> 12. <laughs> 11. 10. 9. 8. 6. 5. 4. 3. 2. One. What's up, guys? Welcome to Dropouts, episode 45. That's crazy. Think about this. <laughs> oh, my God. We've been doing it for 45 weeks. You know what's more surprising? You've kept a fish alive for almost a year, and that baffles me yeah. every time I think How about it. How is ZB still alive? I don't know, man. There have been some close calls, though. No, he was literally floating at the top of his fishbowl for, like, three days, and you're like, yeah, he's dead. And then... I literally thought he was dead. I, I swear to God, I touched him. He didn't move. You were going to flush him, right? I was 100% getting ready to flush him. I picked up the bowl, and homie just zips around the bowl a couple of times. And I'm like, what? He's, He's like, chill, chill, chill. I was just taking a nap. <laughs> I was just kidding. Jared, if you I don't hit kidding. the intro music right now, I'm going to cry. And I'm very emotional right Thanks. Why are you emotional right Jared, now? Jared, intro music, man. We can't talk over this. We talk over it every week. Do we? <laughs> Indy, tell them that thing that you say every week. What's up, B-Word? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Dropout. Um, nice. Dude, you're so good at this. I'm Episode sorry. 45. I'm going to be so honest. I didn't no, think don't be- say that. Don't. People can literally make a compilation of every time you start with, I'm going to be so honest. That's, Guys, this week I'm just not feeling That's it. exactly not what I was going to say, so you can both go suck your own cock. First of all, try. I've, uh, damn it, I was going <laughs> to make that joke. need to get ribs removed. <laughs> and I, I've, I've already got the appointment. Wait, when's your appointment? What if we just did it to each other? What were you saying? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I'm going to be so honest, I didn't think I'd be here this long, so I forgot what I was going to say. When you're oh, like, okay, that makes that makes. Um, she sense. has quit the podcast. How many times do you think? I'm probably about five or six. Yeah, and she's she's written up a draft every time. Like I'm gonna send this out tonight. It's very heartbreaking, actually. Yeah. Every oh time. Bye. After the, but after the fifth time, Jordan and I were like, Nah, nah it's not gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of doing this for 45 weeks, I was doing the math right, and the year anniversary comes out on my birthday. Jordan, I thought you were having one this year. Damn it! Are you kidding? The no, year anniversary. The one year anniversary of Dropouts comes out on his I'm birthday. I'm not gonna be here. Where are you gonna be? Chicago, we've discussed this. Oh, my this. gosh. Chicago. I'm literally going to be gone for a month, so we're really going to have to figure out this whole dropouts thing while I'm gone. Yeah, because then Cause I- Because you're going to be gone two weeks before I leave, so we've got to bank six episodes. Guys, welcome back to Zach. <laughs> um, this week, we have me, <laughs> and it's just me on the iPhone just talking like this for an hour and a half, which is fine. I feel like you could do it. I could do it. Should I start now? Everyone shut up. Okay. <laughs> I'm nervous now. Anxiety. I won't do it. I need you guys. I've realized in the last three seconds. <laughs> We're going to have such a break. It's going to be weird when we come back. I know. We're all going to get lazy. I'm literally not going to be in this apartment for a whole month, which is so weird because I'm here like every day. No, we'll have so much stuff to talk about because you'll talk about Chicago stuff like the bean and deep dish pizza. <laughs> and what else do they have? <laughs> I like how you started off with the bean. <laughs> Everything there is to do in Chicago and the surrounding I area. I only think of the bean when I think of Chicago. I don't know what there is to do there. It's a giant, shiny metal bean. You, you see beautiful. it for about 30 seconds, and you're like, I got the gist of this. <laughs> I plan on spending that, hours. But isn't that, like, every, like, monu- like monument ever? It's a like, little bit, it's and like, I feel bad. I feel so bad. It's like when my parents took me to go see the Statue of Liberty for the first time, I think I was maybe, ooh, uh, I was really young. Like, I was, like, 10, 11, 12. I don't know. Small child, as I was. Small. Um. And, like, they took, and you take this, like, ferry there, and you're super excited, and then you get there, and you're like, 
Sick. No, I've seen it. That's about it. It's also really hard when you're that young because, like, you truly don't appreciate things. Oh, that no, young. I did. Can I say you guys I something kind of embarrassing? What? Sure. Um, I used to, okay, I was a child. Oh, Hear me no. out, okay? When I, but I was approaching, like, adolescence. Yeah, I was approaching like, adolescence. I was yeah. coming at it steady. Yeah. You know? I didn't like when you the, do the that. The hormones, movement. sorry, the hormones were kicking in swift, and I was starting to see women for more than just don't tell me. friendship. Where is that? No. Oh, where um, is that? <laughs> were you attracted to the Statue of Liberty? I was attracted to the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> no, you weren't. I used to look up pages and absolutely go at it to the Statue of Liberty. She is dummy thick. She is dummy thick. She, she got a dump truck. You ever you ever going around back? Nobody ever goes around back. Nobody they just ever, see this. Yeah, they just see this. Dude, the Statue of Liberty has got a dump truck, blow it out thick with <laughs> three C's All looking. Right. What? I'm so done with this conversation. What the f***? Dude, Statue of Liberty Dude, sundress she, challenge. She, oh! <laughs> she's already wearing she's it. She's already wearing it. She gives me that Statue of Liberty, if you know what I mean. And now back to my wholesome story of being 10 years old. Can I go in and say that that was a lie so people don't think I actually I feel like touched it wasn't. myself to the Statue I did not touch hey, myself to the Statue of, of Liberty. Truth hey, Jared. Joke. Hey, Jared. Please cut out the part where he says it's a lie. I did <laughs> not. I'm going to look directly in the camera when I say this. Everyone, please be quiet. This is very serious. Zach absolutely beat nope, it to the nope. statue. He literally. absolutely <laughs> beat it. Absolutely beat it. Yeah, absolutely. Give me this moment. Um, I know there have been rumors about me recently, and I just want to come out and finally <laughs> and confirm that I did. <laughs> guys, beat it. guys, guys, <laughs> guys! Rumors that he created. Wait, no, this is going to be the start of the podcast. So you're going to want to like okay. start it like sad. Hey guys, there have been a lot of rumors um, coming out about me recently and my character and who I am, and I just want to say none of them are true. I, n- I never touched myself to the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> okay? <laughs> I didn't touch myself to the image of the Statue of Liberty. So, <coughs> let's put those rumors to bed. TikTok room, take it down. That would be hilarious. Can yeah. I finish my story now? Yeah, you can finish two stories. Um, Yeah, how you said that, like, when you're young, you don't appreciate those things. I 100% did because I've been traveling since I was so young. So, I was uh, super excited to, like, be immersed in, like, other people's cultures and, like, new things and stuff. But it's happened to me every... I mean, I just think it's... You see monuments so often, like you see the the Eiffel Tower, the Statue of Liber- Liberty, <laughs> Statue of Liberty, like all these things. Like you've already seen the photos, and it's sick. sick Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like this is not. I don't know. It's kind of depressing. I feel bad for them. I'm really sorry that you've had so many terrible statue experiences. Like it's that's a tough thing to go through. Have you thought about therapy about that? Yeah, I have quite often. Hey guys, welcome back to uh, Landmark Talk, where this podcast we only exclusively talk about landmarks. Actually, continuing on that, speaking of like historical places, I read this article um, that there is in uh, like southern Poland, um, there is this like palace that used to be used as a Nazi brothel. Oh, exciting! They discovered um, great heavy metal band name. What, Nazi brothel? Yeah. Oh, that's actually, that's dark, but that's actually a great heavy metal band. Uh, I don't want to be in the band. Um, but they found this uh, this old Nazi SS officer's private diary, and he had written in there, um, he knew the secret location to uh, supposedly buried Nazi gold. And it, there's about, like, rumor, like, from his diary about 700 million dollars worth of gold buried beneath this place and they're going to start excavating it soon like trying to find it really yeah and Crazy. i thought that was like insane that they that were like found really it. interesting um i think they found it like he had written the letter to like his uh his um his lover like his wife or significant other you know and he was like i'm entrusting you with this i'm the only other person that knows this blah 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 Besides Hitler. <laughs> yeah he's like just in case anything happens to me it's like you know where it is and so yeah there's like 700 million yeah, she dollars never got that little worth of gold no no never got it <laughs> but so jared and i we went to vegas uh we went to vegas we liked we're very angry about the prices of haircuts in la i don't know if you know this but we are on we're, we're picketing outside of a supercuts, aren't we, buddy? Every day. Just so expensive. Um, but he and I, so we, it costs way more money to do it, but we travel to Vegas at I a I don't know why you do to that. To get our haircuts. You but guys, the thing is, it really 
doesn't cost that much more money. No, but it's you guys very are similar. still spending. But but more. we're also eight hours round trip in the car just to get our haircuts. Eight our hours time. round trip in the car, a day in Las Vegas, and then the haircut price, like gas, food, everything. It's like not like you can like cook there. So you first have of all, to- our boy Reed, we're best friends now. So every time he sees us, he Great like, gives us like, "Hey, how you doing?" You kid? tell him that you drive up from LA for a haircut. Oh, 100 yeah, percent. Yeah, yeah. What did I, he say? He's a, like, I told him, I was like, "This is probably like the best compliment you should like ever get is the fact that Zach and I drive 400 miles to go and get our haircut by exclusively you. from you." Yeah. Okay. This is gonna sound maybe problematic, but it's not. Gay men cut hair better. Yeah, they really 100%. do. They really do. And I will drive. A thousand miles for a gay man to cut my hair if I have to. You ever seen a straight man in a freaking blowout bar? No. No. <laughs> no. I, d- I couldn't even. What's a blowout bar? Okay. Oh. I assume it's fun. It's fun. like a hairdressing place. Okay, but oh, us okay. going back to Vegas may- reminded me of when Indy went to Vegas with us for the first time, and he she's sleeping in the room alone. I know we already talked about this, <laughs> but then comes out with just wide-eyed, <laughs> guys, <laughs> saw a ghost. <laughs> uh, and we were, Jared and I were like, Okay. Uh, Jer- no. no, I was Jer- full. Sorry. Because she came and got me first because she knew I believed in that shit. <laughs> and she was like, Jared, there's a ghost in this house. I said, fuck, get out. We're getting out of here. And then Zach is like, what are you guys yelling about? And we're like, there's, there's a ghost. A ghost. <laughs> so Jer- yeah, they're both. Sorry. I forgot Jared was crying like a small child. Because Shut of the ghost. up. I comforted you. I held you. Remember that. But I just remember Indy coming out and being like, there's a ghost. And I'm like, oh, Okay. <laughs> don't believe you, but I'll feed into this. Don't know you that well yet. Um, what kind of ghost or what did it look like? She's like, it looked like um, a girl from like an early 2000s movie with like her hat a little bit to the side and a scarf. And I was like, so you're, be, so you're you being haunted by Lizzie McGuire? Like, no, she had ahead? a side ponytail, a part, a side sleek ponytail. So and she was wearing a scarf. And she was <laughs> And she died and decided. That Can she, I be honest though? You no. lied. No, I did not lie. But I think <laughs> I was dreaming of Starstruck <laughs> because I watched Starstruck oh, that day. <laughs> my God. I'm pretty sure I brought up that point. I was like, so you just saw someone from the movie Starstruck. And then you woke up and said, I can't sleep in there. There's definitely someone crazy enough to believe that their significant others cheated on them with a ghost. Oh, 100%. 100%. You ever got a ghost, BJ? Like, no one's going to believe you. It's great. <laughs> but it counts. I feel like I've heard that story before. Hold on. I'm gonna There's no way those. you haven't. Yeah, look up people having sex with ghosts. This is going to be a weird podcast. Oh, yeah. I just Googled ghost blowjob. Let's see. What the hell? Okay. I just found on medium.com. Okay. My favorite website. It's called Spectrophilia. The haunting ghost. (laughs) 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 The haunting ghost sex fetish I never knew I had. Whoa, someone's got it. Jared, I feel like you got that. Why would I have that? Hear me out. I'm terrified of them. Okay, sorry. But what if you're turned on? Okay, you're telling me... Never mind. (laughs) What were you about to say? You're telling me a a ghoulie goblin comes in your room, half dead, a spirit, but has got some absolute knockers on her. You know you're not going to try? If they offer, they're like, yeah. And you're like, yeah, it's a once a lifetime experience. Kind of like the sneaker situation. You gotta oh take my it. god, you got to do it for the story. Well, if that with that point, you got to do it for the story. But then you sound like an absolute f-ing madman. Oh, I got shivs up. It's fine. Oh, was that a ghost trying to? That was you? a oh. ghost. We that, need to talk to HR. No, it wasn't Casper. Casper. I believe shivs up the spine. These spirits tapping you on the shoulder and being like, "Hey," it's like your family members. Oh, a ghost okay. There. Remember, I when, believe it's nerves. Anyway, go ahead. Um, uh, what's her name? Sabrina tried telling us there's like. 12 people in here like oh yeah i forgot about that (laughs) see but like the thing is is like so i was watching i just watched the first season of american horror story right murder house oh my god (gasps) oh the the freaking twist in that yeah okay yo absolute spoiler american horror store store i can't (laughs) (laughs) i can't speak i'm a snake i can't speak today (laughs) absolutely You got this. I believe in you. I can't f***ing speak today. There's an American Horror Story spoiler at right now. Right so now. So just mute it. Um, Violet's dead. Oh, the my whole, she's God. She's been dead the whole time. The, like, the whole time. Like, that was well, insane. I guess I'm not watching it now. No, Zach, I still think it. you would really like it. I no, s- be, well, wouldn't. no, the first season isn't, like, scary. 
you know, it's not, there's like, I mean, there's like a there, few it, little. I would honestly uh, say maybe it's more thriller. Yeah, I it's, enjoy thriller, but you guys just spoiled the main plot line for me. Definitely it's not the main plot line. Definitely not the main plot line. Um, no, there, it's like a psychological thriller. But like, oh my God, like when they revealed that. I uh, jaw filmed on, it. Oh, did she? Yeah, and showed me your face. You went, this was you the whole time. You had the blanket covering your face and you went. Because I was really scared. <laughs> I'm the biggest wuss, but, like, jaw dropped to the floor. But anyway, where I was going with that, um, so, like, in that, the ghosts could, like, they could appear and disappear, like, as they please. Like, they could appear in front of whoever they wanted to and not in front of whoever they didn't. Um, but then you could also have, like, physical interactions with them. Like, before Violet dies, she has, like, a relationship with Evan Peters' character. Okay, where they like messed up not to bring that up, right? Where they, what? If you, like... She was getting intimate with a guy and then didn't tell him she was a ghost? No, no, Not no, no. Cool. She didn't know that she, she was dead. She didn't know she was dead. Well, what the But, hell? no, this was before she died. Like, yeah. they would, like, kiss and, like, hug and cuddle and stuff like that. And I was like, how does that work if you're a ghost? You know, so is it do ghosts exist like that in this world? Okay, with well, how spectrophilia? Do I know? Would you guys hate me if I, like, just kind of told you guys I was a ghost and never really explained? It like if I just brought it up now, would you guys be mad? I'd be I a don't little know if pissed. I'd be, you'd be pissed. I'd be like, well, well, can other people see you, or does everyone just think we're f-ing crazy? I everyone thinks you're crazy. Oh, oh I would be. I'd be real a little pissed. bit pissed. Wait, no, I'd I actually, be. no. This is actually fun. I want to know what would happen if you guys just woke up in the morning, and like that room was just blank, and you guys both just had some weird trip, and I never existed. I'm sorry. Don't do that because I think about that a lot. Actually, I would put I myself that. in an institution. I, I think legitimately. Would, but what, what would you guys come together and say? Be like, we were both going through the trip at the same time. No, no. Okay, so you're not. You have no explanation yet. You just walk into that room. It's completely blank. And like you look on. Where's you, that? No, yeah. You look me up on social media. There's nothing. Like you look at my mom. There's never there are no pictures of me. I I hate this thought. So like, and we go to our phones. There's no. Yeah. There's no we, contacts. There's no pictures of me. But we both we yeah but we bo- both have the same experience. Like up to this point, everything's been normal, and then now I'm just not on this planet. Like quote unquote, dude, I'd lose my fucking mind. I'd absolutely put myself in an institution. I'd pack. Would you my go to shit. the police? Like what? Um, I, uh, maybe I'd go to the police first because I'd be like, no, something's going on here. File like I'd, a missing persons case, and then I'd absolutely. And then if they like run like your and name like, and whatever, they're never like, existed. yeah, that'd I'd be a really interesting movie concept. Super because I'm sure it's, I'm sure there's been a movie where like one person's gone through that, but like if a collective, like three or four people, is like, wait, no, like where's this th- person absolutely existed? Like, I, where, where's Tommy? Where's Tommy? And then and I would absolutely put myself in an institution. Dude, I'd pack my shit and go back home. I'd just be like, I clearly I'm not mentally stable enough to like. And then I just come back a here. year later. Oh, sorry guys, <laughs> dude, went on this trip, crazy, <laughs> lost my phone. I feel like you guys be a little mad about that. But that wouldn't explain how all of your pictures disappeared. No, yeah. It was a big goof. <laughs> it was a big goof. Got you guys. For I just a don't, year. I, that's just a big joke. I don't see you guys for like 20 <laughs> years. And I just come at your guys' like weddings. I'm like, what's that? <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> but uh, speaking of scary things, we went and saw a screening for a scary movie. You s- slimy little <laughs> beautiful girl. <laughs> Wait, why, why do you say that? Jared and I had a screening to go to. Um, Riley, Jared, and I, right? We all knew about it. We knew the movie. We knew everything. And we're like, Zach, we think it'd be a great opportunity if you come. The directors and producers are going to be there. You need to meet them. Yada, 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 yada. He kept asking me what the movie was. And I was like, I, I don't really I knew. Know. It, I knew it was a scary movie the whole time. I was like, I don't really know. He's the worst I'm liar not in the really world. sure. And then when I went to look up the address in the car, I literally had been telling him about it for a couple of days. And then I went to look up the address in the car and accidentally pulled up the flyer because that's where the address was. And it was a scary movie poster. And I was I like, I was trying to tell you the address so you didn't have to look it up. I didn't know. And I, I was, was like, like, it's at AMC in Culver City. And then you're like, I'm going to look it up real quick. And I was like, no. And, and then, then it pulled up and he went, is this a scary movie? And I went, gotta go and whips the car <laughs> real quick. I drove back to Vegas that day to go to that screening with you. But with that scary movie, so the little girl, um, her name is Violet, but she, one of her other roles that she's played is uh, the younger version of Nellie in The Haunting of Hill House. And it was really creepy when she was like, she woke, she was just standing at the front of the theater and she was just like, and she was dressed like classic scary little. Oh girl. yeah. She had like the little, like little plaid, dress, like plaid uh, dress on and like a bow in her hair and little ballet flats and was just standing there like, 
Yeah. Why and did Jared try to get her number? Ah, shut up. Super I did. weird. That was weird. Remember, I had to stop you because you're like, I'm going to go congratulate her. And she's just no, like, I don't no, say that. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. Okay, that's what. Wait, wait. Ours was a joke. Like about Jared didn't hit on a. I did not child. do that. Yes. Anyway, uh, I the, was the little, fangirling because I loved the haunting of Hill House, like, and I was like, "Oh go, my like, god, congratu- that's young Nelly." He wanted to go congratulate the director, but he was like, "I'm gonna go congratulate them." But I thought he just meant the little. I was like, "Jared, you, you can't be a male adult walking so up Jared, to a Jared little just, girl by himself." Jared just beelines like the little girl's just standing by herself, and Jared just like makes no, a beeline. No, for the her. little girl was not standing by herself. She was a the little director, bit away from her mom. The director was standing there and he was talking to her and I went to go talk to the director and be like, hey, you did a great job. And then- But from our view- And then Indy grabs my arm and she's like, Jared, you cannot go talk to that little girl. I was like, hey, first of all, calm the fuck down. I'm (laughs) talking to the director. I'm trying to save you a lawsuit, buddy. (laughs) I was talking to the director. Do you want a blue dot on your house forever? (laughs) A what? A blue blue dot. dot. When you have to register as a sex offender, you get like, you're put on a map with a little blue dot. (laughs) So like if we looked up our neighborhood I in do LA, not do that. it'd be. <laughs> I li- I do not want to look that up because I would be so scared. Yeah, it's terrifying. I wouldn't want to leave. Like I I started looking into it for a little bit when I was I was like, there's just gonna be sex offenders everywhere. I closed my laptop and I was like, I can't look at this, otherwise I'm never gonna leave my house. I just like I pull it up and there's just one on our apartment. And I'm like, hey Jared, <laughs> <laughs> do you mind if we have a little conversation real quick? <laughs> Zach, how much to start in OnlyFans? How much money to start in OnlyFans? Yeah, what do I have to show? Full every I like sh- I gotta show Wiener? Donald Walton the third. Oh yeah, <laughs> um, it's a good callback to your one of your TikToks. Three hundred thousand for me to show my ding dong. Wait, okay, we're gonna three hundred thousand. What we're gonna what? Now is this, I'm asking is you, is this like, three hundred thousand to start it, and then he gets gets to keep the subscription money, or three hundred? Yeah. Okay, I don't think I'd want to do that at all. It doesn't really matter the money. Bullshit. I, I'm Any just amount not of money will of make person. anyone do anything. That's no. true. There like is I, always a price. So if somebody's like Zach, a billion dollars. But that's not even feasible. Like, okay. Oh dude, my god! Why do you, why do you just? It's a hypothetical it's a question. Hypothetical question. <laughs> but then if I have a billion okay. dollars, I, if Jared, it was like GTA and I have like Jared, a cheat code, and I have Jared, to work for anything else in life. How much money? Three hundred thousand. That's a lot of money. I don't know. Oh. Uh, Hannah's but, not going to be okay with it. But then I'd have to be like, I'd be that OnlyFans guy. But 300000 I feel like for me to like really be comfortable Would with Would you it, take his pictures? Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, that's that's okay. You find your price. Now, how much to be his photographer for OnlyFans? <laughs> so I think for me to be like Woo! really comfortable with it, it, it would probably have to be somewhere at least over a million, right? Okay. I know that's a lot. 800000 that's a lot of money. See, I exactly. like, think if I had $100,000 right here, I think you'd go take a picture of your wiener and yeah. go post as an NFT. 100%. <laughs> go post that. But here's, For 100 grand, Jared, yeah. But here's the thing. Here's the thing, right? Um, my my, I've always had this idea of like a million dollars in my head because I live very frugally, right? The only time I ever really spend money is on like equipment, like for music or whatever. Um, but I really don't buy like clothes or uh, like anything. So I live on a very cheap lifestyle and I could make a million dollars last almost the rest of my life. Okay, yes, but I'm not giving you a million dollars for your ding dong. So give me an actual price we're negotiating. A hundred K right here, cold hard cash, go in the and just take a little mirror pick and head back out. A hundred K. Somebody's like, I will Venmo you a hundred thousand dollars right now for you to post a penis pick. You'd do it. Would you? I, I don't know. I mean, that's a lot of money. You would. Let's. I, I can tell by your I can you? tell. No. Okay, then why is it that I would do it, but because you wouldn't do it? very I'm, different I'm, financial situations for all three of us. I'm also, I just, I don't care. I'm like, money doesn't fuel me really at all. It's not about fueling us. Yeah, it's not No, about but I'm saying he would have a price. I would have no price. So that's the, like the difference. Like You I, have no price. I don't care about money that much. Like, I'm doing okay, the but, things I want to do right but now. You're, it's not about you caring about money. It's like. I think we care about money so much because it's a thought into our future. It's like, oh, yeah, I want my kids to be set up. So if I all I have to do is post a titty pic for a million uh, for a million bucks, it's a million bucks I can put towards my kids' college or a new home or. Well, uh, I'm, I'm saying I I wouldn't do that. Like, and that's okay. But I'm not judging you for doing it for a million. I think that's bullshit. I think he would. I I wouldn't. I, he says that because he's like a good person, but I doubt it. No, I don't. Ca- like, there's I don't, no I don't, way. How do you make no a million dollars? If I had a briefcase with a million, million dollars, dollars in the it only right thing now. you, you have to do, you know me. You know my by me just saying I wouldn't. You know I'm saying I wouldn't. I just I just think I think there's a price. I really there's do. Okay, because like everything. the thing is, the thing is, I'm not doing. Are you like, on OnlyFans right now? 
<laughs> I wouldn't do it. Like when you say money is fueling me, really, the only thing it's fueling is stability. Right? Yeah. Okay. But I'm saying, I think you care about it a little bit more than I do. That's why you're willing to give a price. I honestly don't care. I'm just saying. You don't care out. about being financially stable. I am financially stable. That's why I don't need the million dollars to have my ding dong online. All right, guys, Jared, how much and is that's, yours? See, that's another thing It's like, it's very different for guys and girls. No, it's like, not if I'm having my cooter online. Well, okay. A cooter is one thing, but like, <laughs> uh, but like, Dude, what if it was a ding dong versus yitties or I think are different. Exactly. And sure. that, that's, that's like, girls that's what I'm now. struggling. What, girls what, post what's your price? Now. For what? Oh yeah, what? for my okay. yitties. For uh, no, for, all of it. Wait, I would say, what's your price for just yitties, and what's your price for all of it? For my yitties, because you could probably get that number. I know that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so someone wants me. So I don't think you would actually do it for that number. I'd have to do it really high because, like, I like with respect, my brand deals are very high. So it's like, why would I post something when I can get the same amount of money via brand deal? But it's like that's why I'd have to be super high. Okay, what is high? Probably like a million. For my boobs. Just for your... What? Dude, that is a rip-off. I can subscribe to 20,000 other people get their boobs. I can Google search you're, right now. You're telling me 300K for your boobs right now. Dude, Dude, I can make that in like freaking two, three months. Why would I do that? Wow. All right, Jared. Jared's 100,000. It's not 100,000. 150. No. Yeah, it Dude, is. Dude, no, it's it. not. I promise you it's not. I promise you Jared, I would... I am not. I would not be comfortable enough to have my ding dong on the internet. For you got 150 k in your bank account. Okay, so 200 thousand. You no, just I you told said 200 thousand. I gave you my price. I gave you my. Yeah, you, and you said 100 k. No, no, I said no, 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 no. You did no, say 200 k. You, you did guys, say 200 k. You guys are manipulating me and talking me down. I gave you my price. I said, yeah, it's I on said it would have to be over a million. It's on literally it's camera. It's 4K, but it's on 1080p. <laughs> no. I, my final price, I would have it would have to be over a million. Bullshit. Okay, well, because it was on camera. A, a re- guy walks replay. in right now okay. and says, "Jared, I didn't sign anything. I can change my fucking mind." Well, no, the money's off the table. So put your ding dong away. Okay, I'll put my ding dong away. <laughs> I did have out? an offer. I did have an offer the minute I turned eighteen to go do porn. Jesus Christ! It was a nice check. <laughs> How much? <laughs> and I didn't do it anytime. How much? How much do you think it was? I don't know. I don't know how much porn goes for. So this so is I like a like full like porn. Mm-hmm. A million? Hi. Two million? Three and a half. I thought about it for a second too. I went, I no, can't you do did that. Not. It crossed my mind. I mean, but you weren't <laughs> actually considering it, were you? No, it crossed my mind though. I was like, ah. Indy, dude. <laughs> if I ever see you on that site. Why are you on that site? Well, I'm just making sure you're not on there. Um, <laughs> um, or you, Jared. No, I was. If I saw both of you on that site together, that's okay, new money. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Last question: How much would it cost for you to be his exclusive photographer for OnlyFans? <laughs> Not as much <laughs> as you think. Oh, like a thousand? No, <laughs> way thousand. more than that. Like two thousand? How much is more? Are you kidding? Ten thousand? So much more, more than my brand deals for sure. Why? Just to take a picture of him naked? Nobody knows. I guess so. You just have to be in a room with him, <laughs> fully exposed <laughs> as he's Statue of Liberty. Oh, is that Hannah? Thirty. Yes. Yeah, 30. Oh, she knows what we're talking about. Well, maybe she's like, like, is this thirty thousand every time I take a photo, or is this thirty thousand one time fee? Let's just say a year. Okay, how many sessions is that? That's like one a week. Yeah, fifty-two sessions. Fifty-two sessions. They don't have to be long. Sessions aren't that long. Yeah. Hundred grand. Hundred grand. That's not as much as I thought it would be. Hmm. To just take photos. Yeah, I feel like fifty grand would be pretty decent too. I probably no hundred. Can I be your intern? <laughs> I'll, I'll do it unpaid. <laughs> I'll do it. Uh, <laughs> So okay. If you just wa- if you want to see my ding dong, you can just ask. I want to see it. <laughs> okay. Can we stop talking about ding dongs and, and okay, well, only I- fans and porn for two seconds? Well, what about I was I looked if, up. If you bring up anything sexual, I'm gonna punch you right in the noggin. I was gonna ask how much you would sell your virginity for. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a big thing. That's a big thing. Well, I looked up. This is. I knew there was something recently. What side of TikTok are you guys on? And, it's not TikTok, but it's a big thing. Um. And someone like reportedly... People, get it, people go get it, like, certified by a doctor. Yeah. This person, uh, the unnamed millionaire, paid this girl uh, $2.3 million for her virginity. God, that's just... God, who are these people? Can we talk about anything else? You guys want to talk about the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to talk about the Jeff Wittick, David Dobrik drama? I don't even know about it. Oh, really? Um, well, basically, Jeff Wittick... Okay, so they're doing their comeback blog 
uh, Jared, or Jared, uh, <laughs> David Dobrik is doing his comeback vlog, so he's filming like a bunch of stunts, and then oh, he, he posted a comeback vlog. He's no, vlogging. He was like, no. He, no, he was trying to get like footage together like mid last year for a comeback vlog. Oh, okay. What's it? What are those things called? Excavator. Yeah, he um, rented an excavator, which is like the long claw thing that gets dirt, and then he's putting his friends on it by a rope and swinging them around. Um, but was it all consensual? Yeah. yeah. Like, they first were they were doing it with an inner tube, like, because they were in, like, a lake. And so they were just, like, spinning on the inner tube. And they were swinging them around, like, this lake. He was in, the contraption thing was in the middle. And then he had Corinna on it, and she was on it. And she's like, that's too fast. And she got down, and Jeff Wittick was like, I'll do it. Well, she, gets, so Corinna wanted to up the ante. So they took off the inner tube, and she was just going to hold on to it and, like, swing, like, with her foot, like, in the rope or whatever, and, like, hold on and swing, like, Spider-Man, you know? And then, yeah, like she, like Zach said, it, like it went too fast and scared her. Scared her. So she got down. Jeff's like, I'll do it. And then um, they started spinning him around. And he said it was too fast or to slow down or something. Yeah. And then th- was it David that was like sped it up more or something? No. You know the full story. Yeah. Well, so the, the issue was um, he started spinning it around. And then Jeff was like, yo, it's too fast. It's too fast. Because it, it, it got him pretty high. Like, you know, it, like the force started taking him like almost horizontal, you know. And so he was like, hey, slow it down. So then David slowed it down, but he did it too, like, he slowed it down too fast. And so then it did that thing where, like, you're swinging, and rather than, like, a fan where it'll, like, gently, like, slow down, he just, it just stopped, and then Jeff swung into the side of it. With respect, though, I think it's, like, immediately when somebody's, like, like, if somebody's, like, Yo, slow it down. The first thing, if they're scared, the first reaction I'm going to have is to turn it off. Like, I'm exactly. not going to think about being like, it needs to slowly well, wind But down. at the same time, they're saying, like, he should have learned how to use it if he was going to swing his friends from it. No, I understand that. But all of his friends were, con- like, consenting to it. And all of his friends know that he's not a freaking operator of this machine, too. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, well, that, it's like, it's like, ah. And that's where I'm getting It's like tomatoes, tomatoes. It, like, right? it's like, well... Because I've also been watching... He tried to do the right thing and stop it and be like, stop. And then that ended up being the wrong thing. But also, like, he's not a trained professional to use this thing, which is also probably wrong that he did. he's not a trained professional. But yeah. all of his friends know he's not a trained professional and consented to it and saw other people doing it. And then when it was going too fast, he slowed it down like he was asked. Like I, And that's the thing. That's like... I've been so. watching... Well, you got, I think you got to watch it. I've been watching make, like, snippets from the Frenemies podcast with um, Ethan and Trisha. And that's kind of what they were saying. They're like, David's not licensed to, you know, use this machine. Like they were all just being dangerous and stuff. But then watching Jeff's footage, he's like, they're all, like you said, they're all consenting to it. Like David's like, hey, I'm going to spin you around this. And Jeff's like, go ahead. Well, you know? I, th- I think Jeff obviously didn't like that his face got smashed in. But I think I think that's what he's pissed about, honestly. No, it's I, like, yeah, that sucks. But it's also like you guys all put yourselves in dangerous situations. Yeah. Well, no, he's more. He said he was mad about David not visiting him at the hospital, right? No, he did visit him in the hospital. I watched the the footage and stuff uh, or like his little documentary series that he's putting out. David came, visited him in the hospital, paid for all of his medical bills. Like Jeff, even like he tried to have like high spirits in there. And, you know, he's joking. He's like, oh, I look like two face like from the dark night or whatever, you know? And he was like, he told David, he joking with him. He's like, Oh, you should, when I uh, get out of here, like you should come pick me up dressed like the Joker in the nurse's outfit, you know? And David did exactly that. Like he came and got him and stuff, you know? So like he was there through like the, the whole hospital phase, you know, so which is issue? like, which is what I was confused well, his, about. His face is still messed up. I, don't I understand the, the that, issue, but that's everybody's fault. It's not just David's fault. It's everyone's fault. I don't feel like, I don't the, think he was, the like, blaming. The issue that, like, I, I'm finding from this is that um, David, you know, they kind of, like, they all got kind of scared from that. You know, they're like, okay, maybe the vlogs has taken it a little too far. You know, so David kind of went back into, like, not hiding, but, you know, like, he wasn't vlogging or anything. He, um, his comeback vlog never came out, did it? No. I was going to say, I never saw anything about that. But he, you know, he continued. He was, like, a judge on, like, that Nickelodeon show or something. And, like, he kept getting praised and like didn't necessarily talk to Jeff for a long time after that, like after like he got out of the hospital and stuff. And so Jeff was struggling with the fact that like, um, you know, and then Jeff went back to doing like Jeff's barbershop and stuff and people were making comments. They were like, Oh, Jeff's getting fat. Cause his face was swollen. They're like, Oh, Jeff's getting fat. 
um, you know, and like, what's wrong with his face? Stop getting Botox, you know, even though it's swollen from like the meds he's taken and like the fact that he got his face fucked up. Sorry, camera died. Um, so yeah, like, like he was saying, he was like his face, you know, is still healing and stuff, but people were making all these negative comments. Did you he know? not speak about what happened to his face for a while? No, yeah, no he, he's keeping he, a secret. He's keeping a secret, you know, um, and like he would just make all these jokes. He's like, oh, I fell out of building or whatever, you know, stuff like that. I fought a bear, you know, but um, but yeah. So and then he kept seeing David get like all this praise and stuff. And then they weren't talking and he was like, well, that's not right, you know, kind of thing. And so that's where like the drama is coming from. But I'm still I'm still kind of like can like conflicted with it. I think it's. I'm sorry that that happened to him. That sucks so bad because, like, I know how much, like, people's faces mean to each other. Like, to, <laughs> like, no, but, like, actually, like, I yeah. know how much, like, looks and all that means to people. Like, and it can be sometimes the only source of people's confidence, right? Like, I completely understand that. Not even especially, just confidence. In our like, industry, that's, that, that's, that's what our I was about product, to say. Like, especially know? in his industry, right? And then if he's getting all this hate and this backlash and these comments, right, I understand. But at the end of the day, it was all consensual. You consented to that. David did the right thing to slow it down. Shit happened, right? Everyone was put in a stupid sit. Like, David shouldn't have been doing it in the first place, but he should have never consented and allowed it to happen. Like, everyone was just doing dumb, dumb things. And people get hurt when you do stupid things. That is what it is. But, like, at the same time, though, like, my whole thought process on that, like, is he only started to get pissed about it when it started to, like, not affect him but it's like everything was fine until like then he decided it wasn't you know what I mean it was like but you were joking like I visited you in the hospital I came to pick you up also friends grow apart too and now you're using that as an excuse for why you guys grew apart like it's just and that's I don't that's know I don't know I, I haven't seen the documentary but that's just kind of how I feel about it it's like oh now you feel bad about it you didn't feel bad about it then but now you do so now it's an issue and that's eh. that's also where I'm like conflicted because David is getting like all the shit about like oh this is a horrible horribly irresponsible person you know like he shouldn't have been operated but, but and it's like but he Jeff agreed also, to it that's the thing it's like Jeff also probably shouldn't have gotten on the rope and like swung around with an excavator like um, what it's everybody's and you like, were stupid for doing it in the first place you were also stupid for climbing up it like yeah. what and then like nobody also, put a gun to your head and was like climb up this and swing on this rope yeah and then like that that's the thing it's like also part of like this doc series is like they were in um you know they were part of the, one of the stunts that they wanted to do on top of this was like something with skydiving. Right. And, but they wanted to jump alone. And so Jeff, Todd and Natalie all went to this like skydiving camp or whatever. And they literally, they like had to, um, you know, get their license and you have to jump 25 times Uh in order to do that. He's not holding a gun to anyone's head saying you have to do these things. He is saying, I think this would be a funny bit if you guys went and got your skydiving license and sky jumped alone. So you went, drove yourself to those lessons 25 times for you to be able to do it. Why is this his fault? I, that's If you didn't want to do I'm it, saying. then say something. Yeah, I understand that also it comes down to the whole like hierarchy of like, you know, maybe he was using his power in like a way he maybe shouldn't have. And people were like, well, I'm his assistant. Or like, if I don't do this, my views are going to go down. Or if I don't do this, I'm not going to get paid or any say, right. Like stuff like that. It could have been stuff like that. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you did not say that that wasn't okay in the time. You never said that you weren't comfortable with this. You never said that you didn't want to do this. So why is it now his problem? Why is it now his issue? And that's the thing is like, in the documentary, like, so I'm curious to see, like, when the next part comes out, because that's when, like, he actually sits, like, he shows him sh- sitting down with David after they haven't talked for, like, a month or two, you know, and, um, and, but in the documentary, when they were getting their skydiving lesson, you know, license, um, Jeff is, like, he's, like, every time I go up in that plane, I constantly, like, look death in the face, you know, and it's like he has this realization. He has this mental like a capacity to realize that what you're what doing, he's is, doing dangerous. is dangerous and stupid. But like you said, you do it he's, anyway. He's yeah, he's not saying no. And like I get know. it. Like sometimes people get scared to say no. I completely understand that. That does not discredit people. Yeah. But all I'm saying is that nobody put a gun to your head. Nobody was forcing you to do these things. 
you just maybe handle. Like, also, David was maybe being not such a great friend to be like, yo, go do this. But also, you weren't necessarily being the smartest cooking yeah. in a batch to say not say no. And that was like that was another thing on frenemies is they were like you know even the guys on Jackass were more acting more responsible than you know all of the Vlog Squad members, and it's like that's true, but that's also because that was a production done by like a studio, so they were like have to follow certain codes, and they have to have you know exactly. medical and professionals on on set. And, and I like think at a certain point, David should have taken the step up and exactly. done that because his vlogs were becoming such a production production. And it was becoming such a thing that it was like, I mean, everyone watched David's vlogs. Yeah. I didn't know a person that didn't. Everyone spoke about it was like, did you see what happened in David's vlog? Did you see this? It was posted everywhere. At some point, he should have taken the responsibility to be like, this is becoming more than just a vlog. It's becoming a whole production. I need to now have... This and that and that and that and that, right? He should have done that. But at the same time, <laughs> nobody had a gun to their head. They could yeah. have said no. They're all consenting adults. They are all f***ing adults. So. Zach, you're awfully quiet. Oh, I I mean, I'd say what I want to say. I, I haven't seen it enough, so I can't really give an opinion. I haven't seen it at all, but I don't have an opinion on it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that Logan Paul and Floyd May- Mayweather are actually fighting? <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, that's. He's going to get his ass rocked. It's disrespectful and great for boxing. It's not only disrespectful to like, it's weird because you think it'd be like, that's disrespectful to the greats, but but he is a great. So it's like, like, wait, what? It's 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 disrespectful to the sport, I think. Well, yeah, it's disrespectful for the sport, but it's also good for the sport because it puts more eyeballs on the sport. So maybe more people will be into boxing. That's true. I love boxing. I think it's super entertaining. But at the same time, like who's name like four boxers? Like you can't. But you can name Logan Paul and Jake Paul, and you know they boxed recently. So, like, they're putting eyes on boxing, Mm -hmm. but you don't know anything about boxing. So, it's, like, it's a give and take. Yeah. And, like... I just think it's entertaining. Like, I've seen, like, a couple fights, but the only reason I've ever watched a couple fights is maybe because, like, I've been with people that liked it or because, like, people like, yo, have you heard Logan and Jake are boxing? Literally, before I... Before, like, social media people started, like, getting involved. In I'd, fights? Yeah, in fights. I never watched fighting. I watched fighting. Um, like, the that Conor just McGregor wasn't... and that recent fight he did. Well, yeah, I mean, but like, that I was, watched, like... I well, M- when, MMA or UFC is, like, oh, that's trending upwards, where it's, like, nobody really watches boxing. When there are, like, the greats fighting, of course, everyone watches, but that's because it's, like, the name. You don't actually watch it because you enjoy the sport. And, like, my thing is, uh, Floyd was in an interview. I just think it's insane the amount of money How much is he getting? it can generate. Like, nothing's, like, set in stone mm-hmm. yet, but he was talking just, like, with his name and Logan's name, <laughs> like, the amount of eyes that it could bring. He was, like, he's, like, yeah, it could easily be nine figures like he's talking like in the hundreds of millions no they're talking about it might be like the third most watched boxing event of all time which is <laughs> or even the first but that'd be tough because but it brings is- it brings people that love boxing yeah it brings the people that like boxing for only the the greats like floyd mayweather and it brings absolutely everyone else on logan's and it brings a whole like it 360 people yeah it brings not only the people that love floyd and hate floyd it's more of a like, spectacle just, than like a yeah a sport because no. it's like it brings somebody everyone who's zero and one and one and then someone who's 50 and oh who's considered one of the best boxers if not he's never best lost boxer no he's never mm-hmm. lost 50 and oh but then you're fighting someone who's never won it's yeah like, yeah it's like okay well that's a little disrespectful to like anyone that that's what think- i was thinking does that demean like well, Floyd's career. Can you imagine? Oh, no, he, he, no, he doesn't care anymore. He nah, just that's wants true. money. Yeah. That's why he's what Floyd he Money loses? Mayweather. Shocker, what if he loses? Yeah, but that's what everyone's always said for 50. He's not going to lose. Yeah, I mean, th- that's also, uh, that's I what mean, people 50, said He's only about fought Jake 50 Paul times. That's a lot. I, see, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. It's like, I know he doesn't care, but at the same, like, I just feel like, not not like, I would just hold myself, I feel like, to a higher standard, you know? Well, I think he's he knows he can't really box like he used to, like he's getting older. So he's like, I, I think I just want a payday. Of course. <laughs> yeah. And if it's like up in the hundreds of millions. No, why wouldn't you, know? you? Like, I think he'll extend it a little bit so people get a show and then he'll just win. Like, yeah. I, there's Has n- Floyd fought people as big as Logan before? I have no, no idea. But it, but it doesn't matter. Like, Logan Paul couldn't be a YouTuber in boxing. That's why is he going to? <laughs> why is he going to be, be the, the, the best, best boxer? But also, I think <laughs> Logan's going into this knowing he's going to lose. 
Like, I think he's just payday for him, too. It's a name. Like, everyone's got his eye on, eyes on Logan Paul. That's like Jared going up against Roger Federer and having a year to prepare and being <laughs> like, I'm going to beat the best tennis player ever. Yeah, that wouldn't happen. Oh, we can talk about that. I need to apologize to the U.S. Open. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty big apology. Well, you remember, like, what? Months and months and months and months. And months ago, Indy made fun of the entire tennis community, saying it wasn't, like, a real sport, blah, blah, blah. I take it back. You like tennis now. I love tennis. Now that I've showed you. I'm obsessed with watching, like, like the top ten best moments, like, with, like, <laughs> all these people, like, Nadal and, um, what's his name? Uh... Novak, no. Novak. Yeah, and then there's one more. Um, yeah, all these people, right? I'm obsessed with watching it. Like, it gets so close, and like these shots, like sometimes they're so petty. I'm obsessed with watching tennis videos. Wait, so it, when you come watch me the next time, which is Sunday, are you gonna be more like enthralled, like actually into the match? Yeah, I mean, I was into the match, but I also but, like, didn't you did, under you didn't understand what's going on. I don't on. understand what's going you on. You feel like you understand more. Yeah. Okay. And so I'm like. <gasps> <gasps> Zach's favorite mood. He loves to do this thing where he goes like the he goes up to the net and just goes. And it just. What move is that? I don't know what it's called. <laughs> it's one of my moves. No, no, he like you know what I'm talking about. Okay. You, you go like this. You reach really high and you go. And then it like bounces. Okay, so she's talking about a volley. So somebody gives I me. I need yeah. you to talk into the mic. Talking about a volley. Somebody gives me like an overhead short volley, and my favorite thing is I just like to hit it on their side, and then it goes over the fence. So, so they can't get it. It's a little bit petty, I'm going to be honest. No, it, it's like, the, there's no way they can get it. It's no, like, I know, I know, I know. It's I'm like dunking saying. on someone, kind of. No, of course. So now, you, so now you're a, a tenniser. I do enjoy watching the sport. I don't know if I'm ever going to be great. Zach wants me to eventually join a league and play a match, but... I just want well, you to practice for a third time, honestly. It's not... You don't have to be great to, like, appreciate no. a sport. But, like, know, my, mom, like my mom is in her little tennis league. Oh, How she's so cute. She have? She's so cute. That's all I you need to, to do. <laughs> I used to, you know, I mean... She's good, too, I've heard. I used to think I could make it in, you know, to the NFL, and then I met Vernon <laughs> Davis, and I had to look up at one of the best tight ends. And you're and like, oh, uh, there's levels to this. <laughs> and I'm at the I bottom. don't know. Yeah, yeah, mom, I'm probably going to make it in the NFL. You got any more milk? <laughs> yeah, I well, just... Well, I wanted to make it to the... Like, I wanted to be a part of Australia's team for, like, track and field. And I was like, no. Um, and then you realize these people oh, are they built fast, different. Fast. <laughs> I mean, if I had stuck with it, I could have been really good. But I don't know if I could have been that good. Yeah. Like, some people are just born... Like, I'm, I would say I'm pretty athletic. But I would also say I'm not professional athletic athletic. That's the thing. <laughs> it's like, there's a fine line. When you're playing against people that are, like, all normal, at like, athletics or whatever, and you're, like, you're good... You know, and then there's like the people that are like, like, have you, like, I mean, I, I just keep going back. Well, like NBA, NFL, whatever, like you see these people in high school and they're like, oh yeah, there's no question they were going pro because they're like seven foot and they're just walking around like built like a tank. You know, it's like, but our, also you put them against actual pro players. You're like, well, maybe. Well, yeah. Maybe cause, and then, um, but like, I used to think like when I play football, like our running back, you know, he could absolutely just barrel through, you know, crowds of people. And I was like, this dude's going pro. He couldn't even go D2, yeah. you know? And it's like, Isn't oh, wow. Crazy? They're like way better people yeah. out there. <laughs> you know, but it's well, just, the, it was kind of like the thing. It was like at my school and in my league, like not my, I guess league, but I, whatever. When I was like at my school, fastest, nobody could beat me. And then when I, am I like in my like little, little athletic circle? Couldn't beat me. Then I went to state. <laughs> and then I went, okay, definitely a little bit slower, but still could make nationals. Okay. Okay. Got my f***ing <laughs> ass whooped. Like, there are just so many different levels to these things. Well, I'm getting ripped tonight. R.I.P. then. Huzzah. I hope you <laughs> are not on this earth much longer. Than <laughs> well, I, what was that? Someone that continues to um, surprise me in the TikTok world is uh Indiana Masara? Yes, actually. Um but uh Lil Huddy, funny enough, you know. Oh, I haven't heard his new song. I actually uh, uh, America's Sweetheart. I actually like it. Really? It like he I liked his other songs. That's what I'm saying. Like I thought they were he, a little bit like too Jaden esque, I'm gonna be honest. But that, also like 
Jaden doesn't own that zone that genre. That genre. So like, like so like you could say Jaden's music is like Machine Gun Kelly's, yeah. you know, and then well, Machine Gun is. Kelly is, <laughs> you know, the original pop punk people, you know. And so yeah, whatever. But the song is like it's slower, you know, and it's like it's more like down tempo and it like I feel like it shows off his voice a little more. And then I also really like um I, I, I really like the chorus, like just the the writing behind it, because I feel it feels a little more personal than like some. That's other what he said. He wrote this like big paragraph that was like, "This is one of the most personal songs to me." And da, da, da. you know, and then um, I did see snippets of the video, so I've heard snippets of it, but I haven't listened to it in full. Uh, Charlie danced in it, and she like improv to the whole thing. Oh, she was great. In yeah, it. she's was, amazing. It's like I, you you kind of forget that these people are actually like. Like she's an actual dancer yeah. and has been since she was a child. Like, and that was like that her showcasing actual talent, you know, is like the same thing that I loved in like um, Addison Ray's video where she was actually Shiny dancing, Baddest. <laughs> where she was like actually dancing in her music video. And it showed off so more. good. I was like, damn, I forget these people actually dance. Yeah. And um, just like with his music video, it was beautifully shot, like incredibly well done. Um, and then just like, I love the chorus where he's like, I'm the bad boy and you're America's sweetheart. And it's like, you can really tell that like, that's in his mind. Like that's how he like must've felt, whether it was in the relationship with him and Charlie or like whatever. He's Charlie in is now. America's sweetheart. Yeah. Everyone loves her. She is the golden child of America right now. Possibly even the world. Like, yeah, she's. Easily the most well known name it, right now. If all I wanted for my birthday was to have Addison Ray there, would could you make that happen? That's all I want. Please. <laughs> could, you, could, um, could you make it happen? I'm just asking. I don't know. Ugh, <laughs> what are you even good for? The whole this whole reason I've been doing this podcast, if we could come to my birthday again, Addison Ray would be there. Um, but like yeah, it, it it was tough on him, but like he was just thrown into this side of social media that was like he exploded. Then he was like the most talked about relationship in the world was him and Charlie. And then when, like yeah, he would have felt like the bad guy in in America's Sweetheart. Yeah, like especially because he has you know that like just that look about him. You know, kind of that like but he's grungy, actually not like, like that at all. That's it's just a, so yeah. funny. He's not like that at all. Every time I've met him, he's just been the sweetest little boy ever. And I'm like. Yeah, something's not adding up. All right, beat them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into some fan questions, yeah? Hey, dropouts. I've got a question. So if you could ask your future self one question, what would it be? Also, 60% team indie, 20% team sat, and 20% team whole milk. I love this podcast. It literally makes my week. Bye. Bye. So sweet. If you could ask yourself one question, Jared, your future self, Ask right now. Hurry. He's listening. Did you ever get over whole milk? <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Jesus. I'm so sorry. Um, no, what would my one question be? My one question Come on, Jared. would be... Talk to your future self. It looks like you're beating yourself. How old am I, I in this situation? Know, I know we shouldn't have started with him. Fine. You go. Oh, I've decided. I no, you go. go. I would ask myself, is the $5 foot long still a thing? Because <laughs> like the deal is fantastic for the amount of food that you get. I would agree with that. That is a good deal. Thank you. Well, well the five dollar foot long is not a thing right now. What? I hate to break it to you. What would you ask yourself? How many dogs do I have in the future? <laughs> oh, Jared, way to ru- way to waste the question. Mine was a waste of a question, but at least I knew it. <laughs> Over to you, Indy. Um, how many dogs do I have in the future? Come I want to know. I yeah, s- but I love dogs. <sighs> what did I accomplish that made me the happiest? Oh man. That got introspective. I've been very introspective today. Yeah, Zach and Jared. My name's Cody, and I'm from Tennessee, and I have a question for y'all. So in about two weeks, I'm going to be graduating from the University of Tennessee, but I have no clue what I want to do for the rest of my life. What advice would y'all give someone who's about to graduate and they don't know what they want to do for their career when basically society around them tells them that they need to have everything planned out by the time they graduate? Love the podcast. Keep up the good work. Peace. Here's here's what I would say. I would say get a spreadsheet ready of the only the essentials you need to survive for a year. Food, water, where you live, blah, blah, blah. Keep it to the lowest amount you can and then get a job that allows you to make that money without that much work. And then you spend a year, maybe two, depending on every interest you've ever thought of and see if one of them sticks. And then once you find one, see how you can turn it into a monetary gain by working your hardest at it compared to anyone else. That's great advice. Actually. Great advice. I'd say that's perfect advice. 
Yeah. Anyway, go Kentucky Wildcats. Uh, <laughs> Not a Tennessee fan? No. Um, Down with the Rocky Top. I also think, along with that, um, we, at least in this country, have a huge misconception that we have to do the same thing for 40 years, you know? Like, hey, you don't. But you don't, you know? Right. Like, I told Zach the other day. I, I think said, my dad had that premonition. That's why he divorced my mom. <laughs> I was telling Zach the other day, it's like, I would love to do music and, you know, do what we're doing now, like podcasting and stuff. But I would also, when I'm older, like in the future, I want to flip houses. Like, I love, like, I would love been, to do that too. We yeah, should like, be a flipping house duo. Let's do it. Like, I've been, like, redoing, like, you can't really see it, like, on the cameras just yet, but, like, I've been redoing the podcast set, and it's, like, I love this stuff, and it's, like, I would love to do that with houses, like, whole houses, because, you know, I screw up on HGTV, but it's, like, I don't want to do that right now when I'm 22. You never even thought you'd be in the podcast game. Life can take you in so many different ways. Exactly. Well, that's the thing. It's, like, I'm, like, like, listening to these podcasts, and there's podcasts that I grew up watching that, like our podcast is starting to get more views then. And it's like, that's crazy to me. Like when I was, you know, 16, 17, 18, you know, like all these, like a few years ago, I never a thought I would even be in this realm of like media, but let alone like be as successful as like these people that I grew up watching. You and know? now you're a millionaire. I think my Not favorite, even close. <laughs> I think my favorite quote is you are under no obligation to be the same person as you were yesterday. Oh, that's, I love that quote. I think that's super, super important for people to remember. It's like, if you want to go do something completely different than what you've ever thought of doing, go do it, dude. Mm -hmm. Life is too short. Nothing matters. It's like, I don't know. Um, do what makes you happy. I think it was the Pope that said it best. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay. Okay, no, go on. Life is a highway. <laughs> <laughs> God. And I want to... I don't know why I believed you <laughs> oh, for a second. No, oh, I didn't believe him at all, but I wasn't expecting that. I also, I think, I think with what Zach was saying, like getting all of your, like, do a spreadsheet. That's super of smart. Like, yeah, it's super smart. I also think people have a huge misconception about how much money you actually need to live. You don't need a lot. Ask like, me and Jared. We, uh, well, I'm going to be completely honest. The first year that I lived here in LA, I, um, I, earned below the poverty line in uh, like in LA. How much do you think you and lived I off a month? And I earned less than that. Exactly. You how, know. How much do you guys think you lived off a month? Um, oh. Um okay, so we paid what? I paid 550 for I paid 600 for that place. Okay, I think paid 600 including a parking spot. So we'll say 600 and then honestly food like and gas a month. Yeah. and everything Less than a hundred bucks. Yeah, probably. Well, wow. gas a little more for me because I had to drive. I I had a job where I was making five hundred a week, like for sixty hour weeks. And I thought you were making so much money. Yeah, I dude, I thought I was making so much money at the time, and then and you were earning below the poverty line. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Because I was spending, yeah, I was spending, including rent, like seven hundred dollars a month, probably. I mean, there's a reason why when we lived there, I ate cheese quesadillas and salad you know and it was because the salad bags were two dollars and i found 99 cent tortillas and cheese was the most expensive part oh no uh, sometimes uh ralph's would have this deal where they'd have like big chicken breast things for it was like two or three dollars and yeah. i would just stock up on them put them in the freezer and then i could eat on that for like a month sometimes mm -hmm. and then you would get the pasta that's only a dollar and you could eat on that for a week plus the pasta sauce that's a dollar and then um, I would just get like the cheapest cereals, like a dollar thirty nine for like the off brand Cheerios, the yeah. worst tasting things in the world. <laughs> you have to spend a little bit of money on the the milk. Yeah, but yeah, I think uh, under a hundred dollars is what I spent in a month on like food and entertainment Definitely. and like. Gas. That's why I still shop at Aldi, you know, because I can get really cheap groceries. Like I get about two weeks of groceries for fifty bucks, you know, and that's like me kind of splurging from what I used to live off of, you know. And, um, yeah, so it's like I live below the poverty line in one of the most expensive cities in the world, you know, and that's, I was talking to someone about like their financials and they're like, well, I'll be earning this much from like my upcoming job. Do you think I could live out there? I was like, are you kidding me? You could rent our entire apartment by yourself and still have, you know, more money than I made my first year, 
you know, here in LA. You just have to be smart about it. That's it's the just thing. Be, yeah, people are scared of, of living a lifestyle they're not used to. It's mm-hmm. like if you actually want something, you have to sacrifice. If you want to live in LA and you're not earning a whole lot of money, you can do it. It's just you're not going to be living in LA. You're not going to be in Beverly Hills. You're not going to be at these fancy restaurants. You're not going to be there until you work your ass off to get there. It's just it is what it is. That's life. Exactly. But don't be like me and make friends with people that have money. Because <laughs> then they just want to. You want to go out to. Blah, blah, blah? No. Shut up. I didn't do that. I didn't say. I was talking about literally. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, podcast. So I have a question. I'm going to try and make it as clear as possible so it doesn't sound really confusing. But I want to get into social media, and I've been wanting to do that since forever, but I'm only 15, so I want to wait a little bit until I'm a little older. I don't know if after high school. But at the same time, it takes a while to build up, like, that kind of social media profile. So I don't know what's either, like, a good age to maybe start doing that and how do you start getting into social media. Because I just think it seems like a really nice way to kind of sh- create your own content and, like, show yourself to other people. Like, inspire people, teach people things. And, yeah, I don't. I hope it kind of makes sense. But, like, how do you start trying to do that, you know? I cannot f***ing believe that she's 15 years old. Oh, I saw it immediately. I was oh, like, so that, that's what a 15-year-old looks, year old looks like 20 to years me. old to me. 20? Oh, no. no. She'd be such a good model. Oh, my God. So, I thought we get this question. Oh, yeah, she has, like, really nice teeth. Look at her teeth. Perfect teeth, perfect skin, beautiful eyes. I'm just going to comment on her teeth, 15. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we get this question a lot, and a lot of times it's written, but it's like people are like, oh, I want to get into social media and stuff. So she finally sent in like a, a video question, but um, Let's do it. yeah, I thought, well, I thought you were a good um, person to ask about this just because you, you got into this very young, like she's 15 and she's like, oh, I maybe wait a little bit, but you got into it. What? When you were like 14? Mm. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting question because I got into it when I was like 14. That's when I really started to grow up. Pl- Look at that. I don't know. It's an interesting question because I did get into it when I was 14. That's when I first started getting eyes on me, traction around my page. And like, I wouldn't say I regret it because I've been growing my social media to the point where it is since then. But it's also an extremely difficult business to do when you are that young and when you are in high school. And I think that's something that, yes, it set me apart because it's like I was so young doing it and successfully doing it and now I'm this age and I'm where I'm at and it's a huge head start in the game. But it's also a very, very toxic environment to be in so young. Like, it 100%. I would, like, f- I would. you're 15, I would give yourself three years to play around with it and only have fun and don't put pressure on it. Yeah. And do not worry about views. Learn how to make videos. Learn how to make content. But do what you love. Like, create the videos that you love, not because you see other people doing these videos that you think you should be doing. And learn how to tell a story to people that's captivating. Like, learn how to express yourself, but in a way that people, like, understand it. Like, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, you're going to find your audience, but don't take it too seriously. If you get four views from now until you're 18, or even 25, like, it doesn't matter. I think... That was like my a bit a really big issue is like I definitely had a lot of pressure on it from such a young age and I immediately got eyes on me so fast that I didn't know how I didn't have the opportunity to learn. I didn't have the opportunity to to mess around with things that I wanted to do because I never had I never had wiggle room. Mm-hmm. From being 14 years old, I had eyes on me, I had pressure on me to do and say the right thing in front of the camera. You don't have that right now. So mess around with it. Do whatever you want. Have fun. Create the content that you enjoy. And then if you attract an audience based off of that, you can't go wrong in the social media world because you're purely just doing what you love and people are enjoying that as well. But for me, it's like kind of, uh, it's like a... Yeah, and like yours is a little bit different. Not putting down, but like you hit the lottery a little bit with like chicken girls like you didn't know how big it was going to be so no idea so then you just had a platform yeah it was just given to me and i was like what instead of like trying to like well obviously you worked to get a much bigger platform yeah yeah, yeah. but like you didn't have to like the initial start yeah it's like you were just like wait now i have a platform so i have to figure out how to use it yeah instead of like trying to get a platform yeah and last question hi guys um so i wanted to ask you guys a question but first i wanted to um say that i just love your guys's podcast so much you guys are literally the best podcast in the world no one can change my mind on that um 
I didn't really like podcasts at first. I couldn't really get into them um, until I started watching you guys's. I was like, wow, like I literally fell in love. I became obsessed and I've seen every single episode. Um, you guys are the best. I love y'all. Um, but I wanted to ask you guys a question. Um, and that is, I'm really curious to know, like, has, like, out of you three, has anyone ever given you, like, a gift that, like, you didn't like? Yeah. And if so, like, what was it? I want to know. Um, but if you guys haven't, then I want to know, like, what's the best gift that you received from each other? Oh, I got it. So, I love you guys so much. I'm 100% team all of you guys. You guys Aww. are the best. Um, a gift that I didn't like, and it wasn't that I didn't like it. Um, no, oh, I think I know what you're going to say. Well... Okay, my mom my mom was hyping up like a gift for me for like so long. She's like <laughs> I know exactly she's what like, you're gonna say. Yeah. Well, it, there's actually two things. I might not have said one of them. Oh. But she's like, Oh, you're gonna love this gift. I picked out the perfect gift for you. And I'm like stoked. And I'm a kid and I'm like, okay, uh new video game, new Pokemon video game probably is better be sick. Totally dope. Probably new Xbox seven twenty. Can't freaking wait. And <laughs> nothing against her because she was being sweet and I do like to cook. Um she got me um a a pizza stone to put in the <laughs> oven. What? <laughs> and that was like my big gift. For Are you serious? For my birthday or Christmas. And I was just like, oh, thanks, mom. And like, I felt bad because I wasn't excited. And it was, I mean, she had good intentions. It's just like, you're hyping up like a 13 year old kid and he thinks he's going to get an Xbox. And yeah. He gets like a, a stone <laughs> tablet to make pizza on that I didn't use once. <laughs> so. <laughs> I thought you were going to say... The spice soap. The spicy soap, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, we don't talk about the spicy soap. Oh, oh don't okay. talk about that. No, she's going to get mad about the spicy soap. Uh, and then one year, my mom got me spicy soap, like, in my <laughs> stocking. She's like, it's just spicy soap. And I was like, ah, this is funny. Like, I was laughing with her. And then she started crying and said, you don't appreciate my gifts. And I thought, because I thought it was a joke. <laughs> I was like, why would I ever want to put on spicy soap <laughs> onto my body? Sick. You want to know the worst gift I ever got? I mean... Chlamydia. It's not the worst gift I've ever gotten. It was just so embarrassing. I was eight years old. Or no, oh, no, no, no. Sorry. Not what I said. I was I was ten years old. Okay, then what I said. Um <laughs> I was ten years old and every Christmas morning we go and like open your presents with your dad and like with my dad and my brother. Sorry. A dad. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> um anyway, you go like I was opening with my dad and my brother and my mom, just us four. My mom got me a period starter kit. <laughs> and oh. I opened it and I immediately like hit it. And she goes, she films everything too. Like she films it all. And she's like, do you like it? And I was like, I don't even have my period. I didn't get it for another four years after that. And I was literally like, yeah. You were on Chicken Girls pre-period? Yeah. Oh my God. Wow. No, what do you mean? Like you didn't start your period till after you started Chicken Girls? I got my period girls. the same month that I started Chicken Girls. Big month. Wow. <laughs> Big so. month. Which one was more important? Um, the period. Wait, which one came first? The chicken or the period? <laughs> Whatever. It's a decent joke. I chicken want you would say the chicken or the egg. That would have been funnier because technically periods are your eggs. Like, shit. Are they your eggs? I thought it was your, your uterine you, wall well, shedding. The reason why... Somebody doesn't know about period. Well, the reason why your uterine wall sheds is because your egg doesn't have anything to attach to. Let me see your egg. Like nothing fertilizes the egg. <laughs> Ew. Whatever. Regardless, it was my, it was, she got me a period starter kit at 10 years old in front of my dad and my brother, and I wanted to cry. I want to see this video. I never want to see that video. I was so embarrassed. Was the kit informative? I had the kit, and I literally packed it when I moved from um, Australia Australia to LA. I packed it, and that's what I used the first time I got my period because I had nothing else. Oh, I'm proud of you. It was just sitting there for four years, and I was like, guess I got to use it now. (laughs) (laughs) Was that just terrifying when you first got your period? Uh, no, not at all. I was late, so made sense. I was almost 15 when I got it. Normally people get theirs at like 13. I was like, I was expecting it. It wasn't that scary. I was home at least. That's why like the first time I really hung out with you, you were so excited about your period. Yeah, because I just gotten it. (laughs) That's weird to think about. (laughs) Over to you, Jared. My worst gift? <laughs> <laughs> Probably you two. <laughs> um, I mean, I got this really shitty bottle of tequila last year, you know. You? It was just 
<laughs> you loved that gif. You were I'm so excited. I have your reaction on video, and I just watched it today when I was going through all my photos. Oh, really? Yes. That's sweet. You were so excited. I was a, I was a joke. I loved that model. Um, what's my worst gift? I honestly, you actually hate it now. <laughs> I, I just can't drink tequila anymore. I can't. Um, I don't know. But I will. I don't. I don't know what my worst gift is. I'm gonna be completely honest. Jared I, loves every little thing ever. I find appreciation in a lot of things. So you would have loved the pizza stone that I got. Um, well, well <laughs> I'm not a cook, so maybe not. I wasn't but. at the time either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think. My worst. I mean, I'm sure I've gotten just like underwear or socks or whatever. I like this no, case. actually, my <gasps> my mom and I have a tradition of uh, of fundies. Where she like finds like she'll find one pair of like really extravagant pattern like boxer briefs or whatever, and this man just say fundies, fundies, yeah, they're fun undies. <laughs> I'm caught up. Actually, <laughs> uh, dude, I love you, mom, but God, you just embarrass me. Uh, like she also got me. I think it was like my 13th birthday. And she bought me a bra because like I don't know. She bought me a bra. Like I never needed it. But Did you she, use it yet? I was using them up until maybe a year ago. Really? It's, that's, yeah. Like, I just never grew. So, um, she like, bought me a bra. And, like, I've stayed the absolute same size since, like, birth. Um, and she bought me a bra. And uh, I was like, okay, I guess I'll wear this. So, I put it on. And my dad was like, why are you wearing a bra? Like, immediately <gasps> called me out on it. Oh, I was, dad. Dude, I was oh. wearing, because I was wearing, like, a tighter shirt. And you could so see I was wearing, like, a bra for the first time. He's like, why are you wearing a bra? I was like, dad, I'm had this and he was like you so don't need that just like called me out in the most dad way possible he was like you don't is your mom your mom is she well endowed in the the chest area she got some wait where where does like the genetics come from for breasts i don't know but my mom what side of the family my mom's boobs are bigger the dad my mom's got like the dad side though my mom's got huge boobs they're bigger than double d's okay well well, what are your dad's mom's (laughs) size what's your grandma's size don't know. Well, I'm just asking. I didn't. I'm just. I don't know. They all have this boobs. is for science. All like I know is like a lot of the women in my family have boobs. They all do. Like they can all fill out more than a freaking C cup. Well, I think they're all at least D's. If you're a swimmer at a young age, sometimes it can. Um, whatever. That's a lie, right? <laughs> <laughs> she just got so worried. That's a <laughs> lie, right? <laughs> look, look it up. Um, no, is that serious? I will find out. No, I've been in. I was in swimming lessons from a child. <laughs> So what this is saying, um, Indy? is this that is big news. So basically, it's saying like swimming, um, you know, helps burn fat around, uh, like in the the arms and chest region region. Therefore, thereby reducing breast size. Right. That's if you like have them. But as a kid, um, if you are like exercising that area regularly it can also um are you gonna say grow no it can also uh affect long-term changes in your metabolism and breasts are like um you know they're formed of fat tissue and so you might have like such a good swimmer you swam your titties off exactly so you basically accelerated your metabolism to the point where you your body literally can't but then how do i get a fat ass <laughs> sorry i'm so sorry <laughs> anyway that's the podcast people send it out Is there, do we need any memes so, I, I don't have any memes I am send it out sorry. we don't have any memes this week so if you stay to the end obviously send me your favorite meme and indy stop don't say things like that they're children that listen to this um indy tell them things about us and then so we can go eat Thank you guys so much for watching this week's podcast. I'm Indiana. That says Judge. Yep. No, keep going. You're good. You're good. We got to get out of here. so close. That's Tamper Music. Make sure to go follow us on Instagram at Dropouts Pod. And we and will follow see me on Instagram at <laughs> <laughs> We will see you guys next week for another podcast. And don't forget our PO box. Oh, it's linked below. Bye. Bye. Love you so much. My little swag daddy.